first matter to come before the court this morning is State of Ohio versus William Debbie Jr. Both sides will have 15 minutes to argue. The appellant may reserve up to five minutes for rebuttal. If you'd like to reserve that time, I'm keeping the clock this morning. If you let me know, I'll keep you apprised of the passage of time. Of course, we're the briefs and we're ready to proceed with you are. We, um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> even I get confused sometimes about which podium, that, even though there's a sign, you're good. Oh, I'm not good? Because I know we're taking them. Yes. May it please the court, Attorney Darling, on behalf of the appellant, uh, Mr. Demby, I'd like to reserve four, time, uh, four minutes for rebuttal. So we are here on our favorite subject in this courthouse and this district, allied offenses. Uh, that uh, hopefully, if this case ever gets to the Supreme Court, they will use the correct transcripts for those who are not in the we're not on the panel during the state versus Washington up and down yo-yo effect, uh, which is an important case in this uh, this matter. The Supreme Court had uh, reviewed some transcripts from another case to make their decision. So, uh, well, they just issued a, another case too. So. They did the one yesterday. Uh, although I think that's what you're referring to, state versus rough, for even further clarification on this issue. So we thank them for that. So this. Here are two issues that I think the trial court, uh, it's just a sentencing issue. Uh, Mr. Demby uh, murdered his wife, Holly. We got to sentencing. I was co-counsel in the trial. We got to sentencing, and the judge did, well, first of all, the judge did extensive verdict reading from the bench. It was a bench trial. And then we got to sentencing, and he allowed the prosecutor to uh, make an argument for uh, sentencing on the felonious assaults uh, in consecutive to the murder. Now, what's important to consider about that is that at the beginning of the trial, uh, before we took the uh, testament of the first witness, we had asked for a bill of particulars. The state's response was, hey, open discovery, and I tell the bill of particulars, but I'll give you a little preview of what our view is here. And the prosecutor in the case uh, said some things that are germane to our appeal. Basically said, listen, everything's lesser included. They're all allied offenses. The Floyd's assault and the Floyd's assault led to death are all allied offenses. Uh, so are all the other accounts. There was a domestic violence account. And he correctly stated, maybe that's not an allied offense because there's a separate element, family member issues. It's a misdemeanor to play into the, into the sentencing. And then the, the trial proceeded. Uh, not guilty on aggravated murder, so prior calculation, calculation design not guilty, but guilty on, on everything else. Sentencing comes along and the judge allows the state to argue now for consecutive sentences. So as a different in Washington, see Washington, he tried to do the same thing. So Washington tried to argue in his appeal that the state should be judicially stopped from arguing and sentencing. And the Supreme Court said, that there wasn't really any, it's okay to be inconsistent with what you're saying in sentencing versus what your theory of the case was and what you were presenting in evidence. But here's our little difference uh, with respect to Washington is, we didn't get a bill of particulars, now the state of Ohio says, not just this is our theory, that they are saying our position is it's allied offenses, don't worry about it. We're just going for aggravated murder, everything else falls in, into place. And that is important because in Washington's decision, uh, not this court's, but the, the, the Supreme Court's decision, they talked about it wasn't really clear what the state was, was theory was in the trial. And so because it wasn't clear, the defendant had, you know, has just put on notice then, hey, you better position yourself to argue for allied offenses because it's a defendant's burden to protect them from, from double jeopardy. But here's different now. When the state got to sentencing in Washington, it wasn't clear exactly whether they were going for allied offenses or not, and they presented arguments for consecutive sentences, and that was permitted. But here's different because the state said, no, these are allied offenses, and then they got up and argued for consecutive sentences, and I think that is a really important distinction. 
the other issue is the trial court gave us a really good explanation both in verdict and in sentencing and I think what he did was he gave us he admitted he said listen I I think I'm right on the facts there was a there was a, the facts show the evidence showed that there was a stabbing in the upstairs bathroom of the marital home and then Miss Demby fell out the window and Mr. Demby rushed down outside continued the stabbing and then she died sequence of events there. It okay. appeared from the briefs that perhaps the stabbing occurred as she was already out the window. She was hanging out the window. So she, when he entered the bathroom okay. with a knife, she was hanging out the window. He made an attempt to grab her. In grabbing her, he stabbed her several times. More than once? Yes let go of her, it wasn't clear if letting go of her, if she, I think she was, what she was trying to do was escape. She falls. He rushes down the steps outside, continues to stab, and she dies. And of the issue, there's something in the briefs that indicate there's a scabbard. Is there a cover of the knife found in the bathroom? I don't know if it was, I don't remember, Your Honor, if it was found in the bathroom. So in the toilet, yeah. Was it? Okay. Okay. Any testimony about, I'm trying to get a general feel if there's a passage of time between the stabbing events and between whether or not she, he, he, what happened when she fell from the window just prior to it and during that. So the evidence was, Mr. Demby made an extensive, he didn't testify at trial, but he made an extensive uh, admission to the police in their investigation uh, that same night. And what he said was he rushed down the stairs to Lowell Home, rushed down the stairs outside, and then where she was found, uh, continued to stab her. The evidence that was derived from Corner and evidence from the police, Mr. Demby was in really good shape, and they admitted it was possible to have done that within a few seconds to rush down the steps and get out there. And, and, and you're, you're, you're pinpointing the key area here that the trial court struggled with because in sentencing, the trial court said, I think I'm right on the facts that the evidence showed two separate instances, bathroom and outside. But what he, what the trial court struggled with, and this is the second point here, is the law. He, he was, he admitted he was troubled that there wasn't a bill of particulars, not that one was required to discovery, but that it didn't necessarily inform the defendant as to, you got two counts, two separate counts of Florence assault, one under A1, which is the Kind of the classic, you know, serious physical harm, one with physical harm uh, using uh, deadly weapon. Are those, what are those related to? Are those related to the outside? Or are they related to, are they related to domestic violence? He thought maybe one was related to domestic violence because there were, uh, Mr. Demby punched Mrs. Demby in the nose, but there wasn't evidence from the corner of any uh, broken nose or any serious physical Arm, so he thought, well, maybe that relates to the upstairs bathroom, and the other one relates to the outside. And he said he was troubled by this because he brings up the case of State versus Keith Ward, where in a, in a jury setting, he was worried that if you don't identify in the charging document or through a bill of particulars to verify, which count applies to which conduct. And you might have a situation like Keith Ward uh, case that he cited several times in sentencing where there, it was a robbery at a bar and I think it was this just a district. It was robbery at a bar, it was, it was Wayne County. And there were there was a theft of a purse and there was also theft of money from the bar's 
cash register. And what the, the conviction was actually reversed because they were worried that the jury might have thought, okay, he's guilty of an aggravated robbery, but half might have thought he was convicted, he was guilty of aggravated robbery because of the theft of the purse. The other half because of the theft of the money from the cash register. And the court thought, you know, we're talking about unanimous, unanimous, then we're concerned that maybe the jury was confused. And that's what the trial court seemed to be indicating here in his sentence, is that he was confused on the law as to whether the felonious assaults properly informed the defense of what conduct that was related to. Now, when we got right before trial and we were talking about this, because co-counsel and I were worried about do we need to put on a case to show a continuous course of conduct, you know, sort of to uh, avoid the situation where Mr. Demby would be subject to consecutive sentences, when the prosecutor represented that their the state's position was that these were all allied offenses and basically not to worry about it. That was the state's position. We were relieved in that regard. And... Counselor, so you're just now reaching your four minutes of rebuttal time. Okay. But my point, just summarizing up, is just that issue, I think, takes it out of, obviously, State versus Washington is our guide, and State versus Johnson on the allied offenses, too. But State versus Washington, how are we different? That representation Prior, prior to the trial starting, it takes us out, really out of Washington. It's, and actually, Washington touches on it a little bit. They say, you know what? It wasn't clear in Washington whether the state was going for allied offenses or not, or whether they thought the car chase in that case was the basis for failure to comply and the obstructing official business. But in our case, we're different because of the state's representation before trial. And I think the trial court gave us that nugget talking about state versus ward and worried about, boy, if we don't give the defense an opportunity to defend on this, maybe he's not really that convinced that, that you can run these sentences consecutive to each other. I have about two and a half, three minutes left. Three minutes. Okay, thank you. This case, as, as uh, Attorney Darling has stated all, relates to, it focuses a lot and deals a lot with the Washington case from the Supreme Court of Ohio. And, and that case states that it's not the state's burden at the time of trial to neatly frame all issues that may arise during trial. That allied offenses um, analysis is something that is for the sentencing hearing. Um, because things do arise, things do come about or uh, change during that trial time, and the state just doesn't have that burden. It's not an additional burden upon the state to make these arguments neatly for uh, the issue of allied offenses, which is for later during the sentencing. Um, and that's basically what that, that case directly applies here because we did have. Uh, a statement by the state at the beginning with regard to what was allied, what wasn't prior to the commencement of trial. And that theory was based upon all of those elements being, uh, going toward the element of prior calculation design with regard to the aggravated murder uh, charge in this matter. Is it possible for the state to assume the burden by the state's actions that they didn't otherwise have? Um, I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case because of the fact that allied offenses issue is, is definitely the defendant's burden at that point. And, and here we do have a situation where the, the state made some statements prior to trial and the court actually found that that theory, did not accept that theory, found that there was no prior calculation design, actually went on and it is correct that the trial court really went in depth with regard to his reasoning as to what was allied, what wasn't, what went toward each count um, 
in this matter. Um, the trial court went into depth that the events in the bathroom were separate and apart from what took place outside. Um, that the felonious assaults, actually the last uh, three counts of the indictment all had transpired, had all already um, happened at the time when they were in the in that bathroom upstairs and that it was separate and apart from those events which took place down outside um and that all went toward those murder that the count to of murder in, in the indictment here and by outside just so we're clear you're talking about outside down around the steps and outside not just hanging outside the window correct your honor correct um that those initial stabbings happening as as Holly was trying to escape out of, out of the bathroom outside, and she fell outside. The testimony of the coroner stated that those initial stab wounds, that the fall actually didn't cause her death, but it was actually those other stab wounds to the neck. Um, oh, okay, do we have forensic evidence in the record as to the cause of death? It, it, the um, coroner testified that those initial stab wounds and the actual fall itself, if she would have, they would have applied pressure to those stab wounds um, prior to him, you know, the, any neck, neck wounds, that she could have survived. That that was, um, and, and, and in actuality, there was not a lot of blood in, in the abdominal area um, because that the injuries to her neck um, caused the blood loss. So he did testify that, in fact, if she would have had uh, assistance within a reasonable amount of time, that those initial stab wounds would not have caused her death. Um, so the trial court was able to take that information and say, this initial events within the bathroom were separate and apart from what took place outside and downstairs. Um, that his intention by the statement that Debbie made to the detectives that night was, you know, when she was hanging out the restroom, uh, the bathroom window, that his intention was to try to keep her from escaping. Um, so the court went into the process that once she fell out the window, um, his intention was separate once he went down the stairs, went outside, and, and, and committed those additional stabbings. Um, and the defense was actually put on notice of, of the trial courts and wanting of some additional um, case law theories from both sides as to what his ability was with regard to sentencing. Um, he, at, at the time of the verdict, uh, asked for you know, any sort of additional case law from the parties about what his ability was with regard to sentencing. About, he stated he knew that the murder charges would merge. Um, there was no issue with that, but the, in relation to the murder charges and the felonious assault charges. Um, so everybody was aware at that point, prior to the sentencing taking place, prior to um, you know, Mr. Denby's counsel having to make some arguments with regard to merger, that this was something that the court was contemplating and had the burden and the ability at that point was aware and could make arguments with regard to those events all being um, one and the same and being allied offenses, which he would not have been sentenced to, only one of, of those particular charges. Um, and the state really just appoints this court to the House Supreme Court in Washington that uh, the state is not, in no part is bound to those theories that are, that are put forth during the trial, that as issues arise, um, the parties have the ability to make um, a separate theory at sentencing, and, and it's clear here that that's exactly what took place because we had the state going um, to prior calculation design when it initially said that all of these were allied offenses, and, and that clearly was rejected by, by the trial court, um, and therefore, based upon those statements um, from the trial court, made an inaccurate and um, argument that these were in fact not allied offenses and I, the, trial, the state does believe that the trial court was correct in making the determination that these were not allied offenses, that they were two separate offenses for which Mr. Tempe could in fact be sentenced um, and the state would request that the trial court uphold the sentencing of, of uh, the trial court in this matter. Are there no further questions from anyone? 
Thank you very much. Just briefly, Your Honor, I wanted to, to cite the Ward case because I don't think I gave a citation for the record. It's State versus Ward, uh, 2011 Ohio 518. It is in this uh, uh, district. And also, the, the slip opinion that came out yesterday, uh, State versus Ruff, R U F F, slip opinion number 2015 Ohio 995, uh, which clarifies even further. Um, so this allied defense uh, mess that we've gotten ourselves in here in, in this district in Ohio uh, clarifies Johnson on uh, sort of the factors. But uh, th I think the, the Ward case is something that's interesting to look at because it seemed to be important to the trial court in the sentencing. He, he admitted that he felt confident on the facts. He found two separate uh, instances of conduct, bathroom and then outside the home. But he wasn't sure about the law, and he pointed to the war case about the, the importance of the role of informing a defendant uh, that what counts apply to which conduct in the case. And I, I think that is the area uh, that might lead us to be justified in this court of reversing the sentence, uh, just to remind the panel that The sentence was obviously on, on the murder, uh, 15 to life, statutory. Uh, but what the court did was it took five years from one of the felonious assaults and they ran it consecutive to the 15, so the sentence ended up being 20 to life. And that's really the five years that we're arguing should be reversed. It was there. I think the trial court gave us that nugget. I think we followed through on it. And I think it's justified in reversing that five years. Thank you. Thank you both for your presentations this morning. The court will take the matter into advisement. A written decision will be mailed to both sides as well as posted on our website and the Ohio Supreme Court website. Thank you. Thank you.